<coughs> so, I decided to buy Microsoft 365, the Office 365. I needed a space to put all of my crap out online and Google's fixing to start charging and uh, so I've been, you know, leeching off them for decades. Now, I blame GDPR for that, by the way. Uh, I forget what GDPR stands for, but that's the European thing that says uh, people have control over their own digital rights and they can, uh, companies can't scrape it for information. Oh, we know my doorbell. Fuck up the one off. <laughs> well, there's a, there's, that's great. So I, I got that for the family. Uh, Elle's going to need it for school, for office, for school, all kind of stuff. She really likes Microsoft Word. So there's that. I bought the family version, blah, blah, blah. And everything was going great. I really wanted OneNote anyway. I wanted to get away from Evernote because they're having some problems when I'm just done with them. <clears throat> uh, for me, they're having problems. I don't know about anybody else. Uh, I was having really slow performance. I was having trouble getting things to sync. Blah. You know, and, and I, I got a form letter back from their help. And I'm a paying customer with them. So they're, it's, I'm, I'm legacy into like, I think, $45 a year. So that's $45 a year. <clears throat> and I, that's my doorbell ringing, by the way, telling you there's somebody out here. So that's 45 bucks a year. Now, if I double that to 90, uh, I, I can get a little bit more than double that up to 100 bucks a year plus tax I can get. I can get Microsoft Office 365. So Office, uh, Office is great. At some point, Google's going to start charging here too because uh, the U.S. government's already trying to get their crap together to to implement some sort of GDPR in the United States. I don't have a problem with GDPR. I don't. I don't think it quite accomplishes what they wanted it to do. But anyway, it's a whole other video. So back to Office. Here I am. Got I got OneNote working. I got a bunch of stuff to import into OneNote. I'm still I'm still importing OneNote. I have. 81,500 notes in Evernote. And I managed to get the vast majority of them to import into OneNote. I'm so happy. I'm happy as a lark. <clears throat> I saw, I, I say, okay, fine. I want to try Outlook. I want to try to get Outlook to work. Because if I'm going to move away from Google, I want to do it, do it right. So I'm trying to use a Google account email. Because everything has that Google email. I mean, everything. So, I'm trying to use that Google account in Outlook. It says it works. I mean, everybody, oh yeah, it works great. Well, I can, I got everything to work, except contacts. I hit a, I hit a real speed bump to contacts. So, there are two applications. There, there's the Microsoft application on your laptop called Outlook, and then there's the Outlook web. They're two completely different things. I don't think they even talk to each other. I don't think they're the same thing at all. And it's the same on your phone. On an Android phone, you have Outlook application, and you can get to Outlook web, mobile as well. <clears throat> so I go into Outlook, and I cannot get my Google contacts to show up, whether either on the, on the phone or on the computer. I go to try to import the... Uh, card file, the vCard file, and I go look at the vCard file that I exported out of Google, and there are 300 and something, con it's just a huge long list, I can go see all my contacts in it, it imports the first one on the desktop app, boom, one, <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> two A's, A, A, because it's sourced by first name, for, I don't know why, all these email apps insist on sorting my first name, and that's another thing that drives me up the wall. They'll display some, you can tell the display to display last thing first in a lot of them, but whenever you try to do something with them, mechanically, it's first name. I just drove me up a wolf. So, I get one person imported. And uh, that was a very frustrating moment, I'll tell you. That, that was not a happy moment for Kelly. And even that one person didn't show up on the phone. So 
So even on, so from application on the laptop where there's one person and a manually entered person, I even then it won't translate to the phone. So I mean, I don't know where Outlook on the phone is getting its contacts or even if it can get contacts because there's no button on there that says show me the contacts. I don't know where it gets contacts. I don't know. It just doesn't. <clears throat> so the app on the phone for me is completely useless without contacts. I mean, when's the last time you typed in an email address, right? And I'm not going to sit there and go to Google contacts, look up a person, copy their email address and paste it into an email. I'm not doing that. Nobody's doing that. So they're, they're, I'm missing something. There's got to be some magic thing that, that allows you to do this. I'm just, I'm just totally missing it. Anyway, so I go to Outlook for the web on my phone. And it sticks me, well, I have two listed. Even on the, even on the Outlook for web on the computer, I have two inboxes listed. I have this goofball inbox that it defaults to when I just go to the... Uh, you know, Outlook.com. It shows up with this goofy inbox that means nothing. Okay, I, it won't let me send mail. It won't let me do anything. It just had some calendar entries in it. So I wonder if it's actually attached to the, to the calendar. I don't know. I don't care. <clears throat> All I got to do on the web for the desktop is click on this little icon on the left-hand side that's a big G for Gmail. And boom, I'm in my, I'm in my proper... Gmail account. There goes the damn doorbell again. I'm leaning against it over here. <clears throat> so, it's pouring down rain outside. Actually, it's kind of pretty. It's really comfortable out here. So, on, on the desktop, that's all I got to do. I noticed the URLs up at the top say it's, it's like um, Outlook slash mail slash, and then it has a zero for the goofy inbox and a one for the proper inbox. So there's a zero and a one. So I can bookmark, thank God I can bookmark the proper inbox. That doesn't help me on the phone. When I go to the mobile site, it will not let me go to the proper Gmail type inbox. So it sticks me in that goofy one that doesn't work, doesn't do anything, and I don't even know why it's there. And I can't connect. So I go to the desktop site. Well, the desktop site is a mile wide, and it just go it, on your phone. You just you have to scroll and scroll to read everything. You get all the, all the buttons because they're all over the screen, right? So that's useless. So, and oh, and another that's something else. The Google Calendar comes in and works on the online sites and on the phone. So when I'm on my phone app, I can see my Google Calendar, and when I make a change to my Google Calendar, it shows up in Google Calendar as well. So when I'm in the Outlook app on the phone, it sees the Google Calendar. On the Outlook application on the computer, it doesn't. It has its own unique calendar, and never the twain. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> Useless. <clears throat> so... I'm going back to Google email for the time being. Maybe, no, I, no, I'm not going through this frustration again. I mean, this, it's the day after Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday, and I'm like, spent half of yesterday, uh, you know, bloated from eating an awesome dinner to, to today spending a couple of hours while everybody's passed out trying to figure out this stupid email situation and Outlook. I'm just like, uh, uh I'm done. I'm not using stupid programs that they shouldn't have the same name. Honestly, if they're, if they're going to have two completely different entities, you know, one being the application on the computer and another one being the online Apple and the online web page, it's like, why call them the same thing? I don't know. OneNote works great. I love OneNote. Even though it's a little bit different on both, they sync. Everything syncs. Takes it only takes a minute. And I think I like OneNote better for a couple of other things. The only thing I miss from Evernote uh, is the way they do tags. In, in Evernote, you can put multiple tags on a note, and it's note-centric. So you have a note 
and you can put tags on it. You can, that note of, that note belongs to a notebook. Yada yada. <laughs> I, I think that's the only that's the only thing I really miss from Evernote is the multiple tags per God knows it. Multiple tags per note. In OneNote, you have sections. They they in OneNote they it's not. It's file centric because what you have is you have a notebook file that is a database. In that notebook, you have you have sections that are it's like book it's like book chapter page, but it's notebook section page. And it took me a minute to figure out what the hell we're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I think of a bug coming out of my nose. The um, so it's it's organized differently. I just put I have to just put a hashtag mark up at the top of the page. To, in, in lieu of doing, <clears throat> in lieu of doing, you know, proper tags like like Evernote did, I can live with that. One thing I really like about uh, OneNote is I can I can retire a notebook because they're just files, the database files. So I can unmount the database. I can unmount the database and save the file off or archive it somewhere where it's not, you know, not trying to search it. Or I can, uh, you know, you can put a notebook together and then send it to somebody. That kind of stuff is pretty cool. I'm not so sure I like the the layout of sections because also you can't sort pages. It drives me up the wall. That's one thing I, I did in all the time. You can you can sort in Evernote by date created. Uh, you name if that's what you need, what you look for. Uh, you can sort by tags. Uh, you can just sort huge lists and uh, searches and stuff all by this information. In OneNote, really, you can you have a chapter, a, a uh, section, and in that section you have pages, and the order of the pages is very important, so you can't sort them. <laughs> because you can drag and drop them and manually move them around so that they're in a different order, but you can't. You can't just say, you know, sort by the date created. Give me the, give me the newest ones first, the oldest ones last, whatever. And, you know, you can't do that. It drives me up the wall trying to figure out where I stopped, where I left off on something and, and where, I'm continue, where I continued on, you know, day by day by day. I do a lot of pages a day. Because I basically clip everything I read on the internet. Which also works just fine, by the way. The web clipper seems to work fine. So, I like the fact that you can... Just clip, put a little data of information on it and go. Clip, do a little data of information on it and go. With Evernote and do that with both of them. So, purchase. Uh, now that Gmail is going to start charging pretty soon for space, for photos, and all that crap, because they can't scrape it for information anymore because of GDPR and GDPR coming to the United States or something. Uh, for targeted advertising, they're going to start charging for that space. Well, I'm already paying for Evernote. I'm cutting that off. And, and now uh, Gmail wants to add on top of my Evernote bill. And by the time I start adding these up, I'm like, well, I might as well just get, I might as well just get, uh, get Office 365 and just have one bill in one place to put all that crap. Because they give you a terabyte of space and that'll, That'll hold me for a little while. <laughs> I mean, if I get crazy and want more than that, I'll start moving things off on a hard drive and putting them in the safe or something. Because, I mean, at some point, you just have to get rid of things you don't need anymore. You gotta go in and clean house. And I think a terabyte is more than enough space for me to hang on to things for a year or so until they're no longer needed in my life. Anyway. That's enough ranting for this video.